is so stupid it's positively brilliant. Yep, Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots, and today's show is brought to you by Squarespace. Turn your great idea into a reality with Squarespace, okay? Squarespace makes it easier than ever to launch your passion project, whether you're showcasing your work or selling products of any kind. With beautiful templates and the ability to customize just about anything, you can easily make a beautiful website yourself. And if you do get stuck, Squarespace's 24-7 award-winning customer support is there to help. Head to squarespace.com slash idiot for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code idiot to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. What out, Schultzy? Man, this episode is also brought to you by Boost Mobile. Boost Mobile doesn't offer one great thing. It offers many great things like super reliable, super fast nationwide network and four lines of $100 for $100 a month with unlimited gigs for data, talk, and text. And four free LG Stilo or Stylo phones. Five phones for the whole family. Boost Mobile, the switch that gives you more. Offers and coverage not available everywhere. Free phone requires port in. Additional terms and conditions Apply, visit boostmobile.com or your nearest retailer for details. Do we Eddie have any Murphy, church announcements? Yo, I got a church announcement. Apparently, Eddie Murphy's going back on tour. Really? You guys hear this? Yeah, well, he probably is. He's probably it, uh, warming up to do a stand up. Well, he apparently he got the bag from Netflix, so that's the rumor. But uh, Comedy Hype just posted, I don't know how real it is that, uh, that he's going back on tour. Mm. That's big news. It's and huge I'm, news. I'm nervous about it because I don't think you should start with a tour. How do you think you should have started? You got to start Let's with going in. to the clubs. You got to do five minutes at a time. You can't do this shit an hour at a time. You think it's, Eddie could just sneak into some hole in the wall spot and just? Yes, I think yeah, that would be the best thing for Eddie yeah. Murphy. I think yeah. that takes away expectations. I think that takes away pressure. I think that remember when Chappelle had went away for a while, mm-hmm. yeah. exactly. And then when he got back, he was just floating through the the, the clubs and everybody like, Yo, I went I to a couple Chappelle of those. Here. I saw Chappelle there. That's what Eddie should do. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I should also introduce our our guests. Do they need got, an introduction? We got the flagrant two boys in the building. Do they need it? Yeah. Yeah. We got a cop yeah. sing yeah. and one of the guys that assaulted Jesse Smollett <laughs> in here. <laughs> Kaz done got Juicy. dick on us. Kaz Juicy. Like he, Kaz like he playing this weekend <laughs> in that league that black people are fake boycotting. <laughs> 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 black people still boycotting Boy, the NFL. Boycotting the NFL? Man, listen. That was the hardest three weeks of my life, yo. Your brass knuckles fell out, bro. It happens. Oh, <laughs> yo, that's the blackest <laughs> thing I've ever seen. <laughs> God damn. All right. It happens. I mean, it's, it's pretty safe over here in, in I, 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 listen, I always have them. Uh, you say that. I've been jumped twice over here. Uh, oh, well, that's true. Exactly. That's yeah. true. That was with the, the old face. The new face haven't been That is true. Here. They like the new, <laughs> the new face. Jump, the new face is a little, little disarming. Like, oh, he's a nice guy. Leave him alone. Now, what you were saying about beating up Juicy Smollett? Uh, I didn't beat up Juicy Smollett. I oh. said that the, those uh, three weeks I boycotted the NFL were the hardest three weeks of my life. Right. <laughs> Did you know why you were boycotting? Uh, Maybe. So, you know how hard that shit was. Yeah, I was fucked up. I was fucked up. Like you know, (laughs) anytime anybody asks me, you know why you boy, I'm like, you know. <laughs> no, cat, cat. That's all I got. Yo. What the fuck is wrong with the man? What the fuck, bro? Damn. I have to notice the sentence. I can't notice the sentence. The, the hardest three weeks of my life. I think you've been through the hardest three weeks of your life, and it wasn't no fucking me that did it. Bro. I mean, he's got I can't a point, guys. Crazy sentences, all. Yeah, that, that is a good point. Jazz. I can't notice. We were going there. You just dropped Jesus Christ, oh gosh. I mean, that's wrong. I mean, Kasha ain't used no KY, no that. nothing. I needed like, that. I needed that. a lot of crazy shit. He'd be like, yo, I can't find this Popeye's chicken sandwich. It's the hardest three weeks of my life. You keep, you keep throwing out a lot of hardest three weeks of your life, fam. It's a lot of hardest three weeks of your life. <laughs> but Kasha came through with the nuke for no reason. Oh, <laughs> like, my God. Like, what the Kasha you? I needed it. I needed it. No, you did it. Nah, that did wasn't it. weird me. to yo, anybody else. Kasha that that came back from Cancun. He was like, the pollen is a motherfucker. It's been the hardest. I got a heat. Heat rash and shit. I'm like, I can't go with this I got a heat <laughs> rash too this weekend. Oh, oh God. Yeah. Jesus <laughs> Christ. I didn't know oh, we were supposed to wear suntan lotion, man. This is, I'm this offended, Akash. It's been really difficult for me. I'm offended, bro. <laughs> hey, look, man. I'll you need a... to be canceled. Hey, bro. Hey, bro. I can't believe you would just do that. You unsubscribed no to me in the first place. You go ahead and cancel, my guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. Oh, God damn it. I'm watching the NFL, baby. I'm watching the NFL, baby. You team Jay? 
I'm Team Cowboys. If you mean J. Hell Jerry yeah. Jones, yeah. baby. Yeah. Yeah. Zeke yeah. got that deal. Zeke got that bag, baby. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yep. He ain't going to be there too for another money, two baby. years. Hold you on. They're trading him in two years. 90. Um, nah, he got to go. Odell him. Six years, three. 90 million, 50, 50 million guaranteed. guaranteed. So good. Dak's not getting signed. Another Dak's going to get money. Dak's going to get paid. You got to pay your quarterback. But I just, I don't know. I don't like paying a running back that much. Yeah. How many years has he been in the league? Three? Yes, it's third year. Yeah, hey, he got about three more good ones. He ain't gonna end it. That count, he's not gonna finish that contract on the Cowboys. Nah, guaranteed. Nah, he's not gonna finish the contract. Guaranteed. Period. Nah, but guaranteed. He's gonna get three years. <laughs> he guaranteed. He got fifty yeah. guaranteed. That's the only money he's gonna see. Yeah, you, you, he pulls that shit. He pulled this summer. Guarantee he ends up on like the fucking like Dolphins or some shit. What's wrong year? with holding out till you get your bread though? I don't have a problem mm, with him holding out. Either. I just wouldn't have it's paid him running off the Cowboys. Backs, though. It's running back. That's all man. the more reason to do it because you know your all, window is short. As soon as you got a nice cheaper alternative. Getting the oh, they're getting out them out. I got yeah. my fifty million Good. guarantee. Yeah, but that's though. why you got to hold out if you're Zeke. Absolutely, I wouldn't mm. have signed him, but I also one hundred percent understand why you, you wouldn't hold have out. signed Zeke. I wouldn't have given the him the best running million. back in the league right now. Nah, yeah, He's I know. Not the best. You could find running backs. And you're a Cowboys fan. Yeah, exactly. If you can find running backs, then how come we haven't had one like Zeke since Emmett fucking Smith? He's the best we've had since Emmett Smith, but you could have had... They've had good running backs for much cheaper. DeMarco Murray was good nowhere. for much DeMarco cheaper. DeMarco Murray had like a good two seasons Decent. when he was that dude. Yeah, got he's us not nowhere. as good as Zeke in any way, but he's also about $12 million a year cheaper. Marion Barber yeah. got us nowhere. $14 million a year cheaper. You know what I mean? Who's like, the last marquee running back to win a Super Bowl? God damn. Last marquee running back in this era? Not, I can't think of nobody. Who the fuck was it? <laughs> they don't win Super Bowls. That's what I'm trying to say. Running backs, wide receivers, useless. You but if you got both, anywhere. though. You, you had got... Le'Veon Bell if you're Pittsburgh. Then he held out. And you okay. had James Conner be almost as good for way less money. And That's you're the point. still lose in the second headaches. round anyway. So you might as well lose in the second round anyway for way less. Nah, the Cowboys would be like this year. <laughs> they they should what? be. No, I'm not talking about, they should be good about the Steelers. Yeah. That's what, oh. the same they didn't even make it to the playoffs, to be honest. But whatever. That's also, they had design. all this drama with Antonio Brown, and right. it was just like a lot. You heard about uh, him getting fined today, right? Antonio right. Brown? Antonio yeah. Brown, yeah. So they find all those uh, preseason practices he missed and all the bullshit he was going through, I think he got fined like $48,000 or some shit like that. And he went on Instagram talking about like, yo, I'm going to make everybody pay for this. This is BS, da 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 Not if you don't have a good season, my brother. Facts. If you don't have a good season, they don't give a fuck about you in the NFL. Uh-huh. He's a wide receiver. So you can talk all the shit you want if you ball out. Yeah. If you don't, bye. He's a wide receiver, man. Like I don't, shit. I don't understand how you could be that fucking arrogant knowing that you absolutely need somebody else to be good for yeah. you to be good. When you going to play, bro? Play you got thick on us, Cash. Yo, man, listen. Charlemagne is called this is, this, is, this is my depression weight. Thick <laughs> five times, dude. Yeah. He walked up to me. He goes, damn, you are thick. Because I got my thigh meat there out. There was no, like, hey, I'm sorry. You don't start off with tragedy, bro. <laughs> what you start shit, off with bro. fucking calling him fat? Yeah. Listen, That's what you start off all. with? Shane? You are you're shaming for, him for a man this big. This is some nice <laughs> legs, bro. Leg, dog. Dude, this God is God damn. Yeah. How much we can get it for him at the con- <laughs> combine? <laughs> dog, I can't go back on somebody's defensive end or some shit. Yeah. You look healthy though. Look. Like you in shape. I mean, it's, it's, I know, his body, no, you know, I know. I'm gonna tell you something because I, I, I saw somebody yesterday, fat shame cast, <laughs> and I, I cried laughing because somebody said something. Somebody said something to him on Instagram. Fire your trainer. I'm like, yeah, Word? and you was like, it's called depression, bro. Not gonna lie, I laughed only because I do like a little misery, just a little. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I laughed. Not Akash levels. <laughs> Not Akash levels. Not like just this motherfucker. Yo. But I just observe things. But guys, I like, that's all. I like the response more because Cass posted a video. He was having a great time on stage. <laughs> I was, at, I was at Made in America. Do say Palooza. <laughs> These motherfuckers on social media won't let you be great. Yeah, How dare up, you? Son. Oh, you got the crowd How dare you hype. Have fun. You got the crowd hype. You and your uh, little do say. Palooza crew? Nah, What's up with your trainer, bro? Lit, bro? That shit was lit as fuck, bro. You look out of breath, but it looked bro. lit, dog. <laughs> you, I know, you saw I had to take like breaks in between Yo. each song. Like, I was like, all right, hold up. You could barely hold up the super <sighs> song. <laughs> there was one scene when Cav first came out with the water. Yeah. That bounced across that stage, took him out. He was done. <laughs> he was done for the rest of the performance. He, Listen, he was my, done. If my leg done. bent down anymore, that's like two ACLs gone immediately. I had no weight on that. What on that? You took a knee? No, I'm just saying, like, just the energy and shit, For like Konya? bouncing up and down, <laughs> bouncing up and down. Them, them ACLs ain't as strong as they used to be, bro. Hey, boycotting Hennessy. We are do say, all right. We don't speak those. 
<laughs> Don't mention the other guys on this podcast, god damn it. Jesus this Christ. is a deuce podcast, god damn it. But damn. You know, that, 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 that comment did make me chuckle. And that's the one when I when I was looking to see how much weight you had gained. Because I couldn't tell. I couldn't tell from the video. How much weight you think you gained, bro? How much weight I gained? Yeah. I, I I definitely put on like a good like fifteen. At least in the past, wow. yeah. like a freshman fifteen. Yeah, yeah, but like I'm bit like I'm I got like big limbs and shit, so it looks different. Yeah, yeah. like if I was like linkier, then it probably wouldn't be as yeah. <laughs> Is Alex zooming in on you right now? <laughs> no, are you? That thigh meat. Damn, I need this fat shit. I'm gonna call Zeus up. I need to get get back on my. That's your trainer. Again. That's my trainer. Yeah, shout out my man Irv. Yo, he trains me. Mm. That is terrible timing to to have that tragedy happen and then Popeyes drops a chicken sandwich. Like, I you mean, know where this not is going. for nothing. Yeah. This is gonna lead to weight gain. Not for nothing though. I don't want. I don't want to talk about chicken this episode. We OD'd on chicken, <laughs> bro. So, bro, we OD'd on chicken. You know how many things we learned last episode, Akash? Yeah. Bro, oh, first of all, we learned about black people's love for chicken is on another level. Right? You just learned this? No, I, I thought it was a stereotype. Nah, we all know how, this. How like important it was, and like, but time out. Who doesn't love chicken? Is. Yeah, but this is different. This is different. <laughs> how? That's what his point is: is that it's a different level. It's a different level of love. Which you know I'm how not much? Aware of. You know how much shit we got to do to chicken for us to love it? Y'all just eat it. However. Yeah. No Who seasoning. What are you talking about? I mean, just uh, yeah, you do a lot. I'm not to you. It. Yeah. I'm not, I, I still don't know the demo of people that was buying that fucking chicken sandwich, yo. I'm I'm in that demo. I bought that. Shit. I bought that sandwich. I have not had it. It was really good. We bought multiple. It wasn't until again. Like, you went back. No, I haven't gone back. Oh. I saw a line. Like, Asians are into it now. Yeah. It's crossover. It's breakdancing. It's, it's, break it's, 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 it's the new Supreme. It's the new Supreme. It's the new breakdancing. It's really it's taking the new over. Supreme. It's like, it is, bro. There was a line outside. Them hype beast Asians were so fucking ready to get some pimples off that shit. I had enough of it when I saw them uh, break into the you know store with guns. breaking out, bro. Oh, my God. That's when I knew it was too much. Fun's over. They broke into the store. They broke into Houston with guns because they didn't have no more chicken sandwiches. Really? So they stormed it with guns and like, like, yo, we know y'all got chicken back there. As if, <laughs> as if a limited supply doesn't mean limited supply. Like, right. all, everything is good until supplies last. When there's no more supplies, it's a wrap. Like, you can't magically bake supplies from scratch. Yeah. If there's no more fucking chicken patties, it's no more chicken patties. And that's that. So do you do you still think we like chicken the same, Ken? <laughs> <laughs> Given that information, <laughs> how do you feel about our- Beyonce has a lifetime, uh, a limit, a lifetime <laughs> card to Popeyes. Popeyes gave her a card that allows her to get Popeyes chicken for the rest of her life. She's is had she vegan? Since, yeah, but she's had this since like 03, 02. I played the clip this morning on the breakfast club. When she was on Oprah, she told Oprah that. Oh, jeez. Lifetime supply of Popeyes for life. So you think she knew about this chicken sandwich way early? I mean, we've all, we've, we've loved Popeyes forever. Like I was telling yeah. my yeah. guy eating, eating that old hunting fish club, he was like, you know, Popeyes is on the map now. So I'm like, Bro, no, we always love Popeyes. I've been calling Popeyes, Popeyes chicken and nigga cookies forever. <laughs> <laughs> I have. I love, I've been eating Popeyes. Like, Yo, Popeyes ain't nothing what new. What is an N word cookie? <laughs> biscuits. <laughs> yeah, the biscuits, bro. <laughs> That's the most hilarious thing ever. It's facts. It's facts. Did a white invent that or a black invent that? That's Charlemagne. No, it's gotta biscuit. be a Charlemagne. Dude, an N word cookie <laughs> is a biscuit. Is that your thing or that's a thing? I thought everybody called biscuits and word cookies. Who the fuck it's are you hanging out with? It's actually a white racist I, I've thing. I've never heard it of it, but a white yeah, thing. white white it's, slave owners used to say that. Like I like that came that's plantation talk. I was about to say I've never heard of it, but I knew it immediately. That's I knew, too funny. <laughs> I knew it immediately. Honestly, that's too I'm first funny. First generation African, I'm like I don't know this shit. I was like, oh, nigger cookies, yeah, I know that. White people got cookies though. <laughs> biscuits. We just call them crackers. Yeah. That's all. Yeah, that's it terrible. Have the same Yo, the racist thing. plantation owner much more creative than you. That was yeah, that's true, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real. Much you, funnier. Yeah, you just love white supremacy so much that you don't want to laugh at white people. Mm. Well, I, I don't give a fuck. You can't white shame me, <laughs> Charlie. <Charlie-Man. laughs> Everybody can suck my dick. I don't care. The whole shit. I hear you, Malik Yo. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you, my brother. <laughs> yo, yo, NYPD Blue, sh- the blue stood for balls. No, oh, that's, that's a different that show. That was undercover, motherfucker. Yeah, that's a different show. Shit. Shit. Hey, I know what they were undercover <laughs> about. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you that. <laughs> bro. Got you, bro. Holy shit, dog. And you know what? That's crazy. Shouts to Malik. Didn't we have Malik on uh, Brilliant Idiots? We yes, did. Yes, man. Yeah. Years ago. Damn. Years ago, Malik. Yoba was on. We had him on Breakfast Club a couple weeks ago, but all he came to talk about was real estate. I'm like, don't be saving that hot shit for Instagram. You want to bring that <laughs> to the, 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 the hut, baby. So, like, <laughs> 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 
Damn, you waited. You could have gave that to us two weeks ago. Although, so wait, and he came out and he was just like, I like trans guys. I think the conversation started. It came from a good place. I think he saw a video of, I cannot remember the young man's name, but it was a young man who got... He killed himself. Yeah, he killed himself. He killed himself. I think he was in Philly. Yeah. Okay. People and were like running up to his, uh, to him with a phone, just kind of like nagging yeah. him because girls, trans, whatever. And the kid was being the, guy, the kid was being open, like, "Yo, I love transgender women." And if I'm not mistaken, I think Malik did talk about that. But he was like, "Yo, I, I like transgender. Women. I like what I like, basically." And they were shaming him for it, same way Akash has been shaming Cass since we got in here, and mm -hmm. fucking. Malik Yoba. And you shaming my thighs? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Malik Yoba was Fuck like, that's what made him come out because he like. I heard something felt different. Like the trans lovers needed an ally. I heard something different, bro. What'd, What'd you hear? hear? I heard. Mm, I mean, I don't like to spread Spill rumors. Spill that tea, Cass. But I, I heard. I heard somebody with Malik Yoba. Uh -huh. Like I heard it was like he was fucking with like underage trans. Well, I heard that children. after the fact. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like That's I heard like he's, he's trying to get anything. in front of it. You know, before it all. Yo, poof. but what do those underage <laughs> trans identify as? Like, do you think that identifies? Yeah, 20, like, what if they, what if they identify no. as twenty two years old? <laughs> Yo, Bo, that's a great question. I'm just saying, that's a great question. I'm just saying. That's a great fucking question. And I'm gonna How tell you, you why feel? else. How she, do you feel inside? Listen, she's a prostitute too. Uh huh. Right. Mm, so yeah. it's just like. Yo, if she was talking about the block on 14th Street. Now, I only know this block because of Mr. C. I was about to... Oh, right? gosh. He <laughs> know this block of Mr. C. He took you there. No, that's where he used to get arrested yeah, at all the time. That's where he got, that's where he got no, knocked. He got arrested there like twice. That's how you got breakfast clubs. <laughs> no, he, 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 he got arrested there like twice. So clearly that district is a hot spot for, trans. for transgender, transsexual prostitutes. I don't know what the proper term is. Right? Yeah, yeah. But clearly that spot is a hot spot for that type of action. Mm. Yeah. I don't think anybody that's going that's down the there. That's chicken sandwich for trans. <laughs> I'm just saying. I don't think nobody's going down there. You can't eat just one. <laughs> but I don't think nobody's going down there to ask for ID is what I'm saying. Uh, Everybody's doing oh, something good, Thank you so much. Like you're buying, so why would you sell, why would you you're sell buying prostitutes and you're a prostitute, yeah. right? You know what I'm saying? And aren't you gonna assume that the? Well, I guess you can't assume, but that's a weird situation. Like if you're IDing the person you're about to do something illegal with, it's like if your weed dealer ID'd you for weed. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. You would think something was up. 18 and up. It's yeah. So, like, legally, is he, is he in any trouble? Like, is that, is that Malik illegal? Yoda? Yeah. It depends if, if the trainee comes out and says something about it. Transgender. Trans transsexual. Whatever. <laughs> I was at dinner with... <laughs> wait a minute. Uh, it's too many. I was at this. dinner with Jesus last night. Yeah. And I was repeating Dave Chappelle joke, and he was like, stop right there. I'm like, what? Like, mm. you ain't even identifying him right, so that's how you know the joke is bad. I'm like, who are you? Yo. Nah, <laughs> wait, really? Yo, yo, yo. yo <laughs> he was that ass? He's just defensive over trans, bro. Really? Remember when you had the trans on your show? Remember you had the that guy. one trans yeah, guy yeah, 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 on yeah, your yeah, show? Yeah, 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 uh -huh. And I remember we were asking him something like that, and, like, and Jesus just popped up out of nowhere. He's like, no, I know him for a minute. I know him up in the Bronx for a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything's going on. He's oh, legit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, so I, I think he's very defensive of that community. I respect it. He did push back on me on the joke. Like, I'm like, I'm not saying the joke. I'm repeating, repeating what the they said. No, nah, but it was triggering, bro, because he remembered those days. And by the way, I didn't know transsexual <laughs> wasn't the proper term. Huh? What is the proper term? I didn't it's know trans, transsexual transgender, wasn't. right? That's the. I think that's term. two different things. I think it's transsexual, transgender. It's a lot, yo. It's a lot. <laughs> it's, it's a, a lot. lot, yo. Nah, it's, it's a, a lot. lot, dude. It is a that's lot. That's what makes dude. the joke so funny. No, nah, it's a lot. The T's in the back I of the car. It's a, I'm a like, lot. <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot. It, the it problem, needs to be knowing the, a lot, and I don't even know this is too much. It's too much <laughs> lot. That shit is too lot. The biggest problem with this whole shit. Boy, is, what what, did, what kind of pushback did he give? What he just stopped me like. Yeah. That's why he. That's how you know a joke isn't no good because if you say you don't even know the proper lingo, nah, nah, man. Sometimes yeah. the funny <laughs> like is the wrong. It's lingo. usually yeah. funnier when like, I'm not saying the right I want, shit. I want Dave Chappelle to speak on the situation the way he would speak on it. The yeah, same way I want all of y'all to speak on it. Exactly. Mm. We yeah. don't know, so you know what happens when somebody doesn't know. Yeah, they should be taught. Ah. And if we don't throw it out there, how do yeah. we know we saying the wrong shit? You know, we were talking about that before y'all walked in because we were talking about the uh, uh, uninterrupted joint on HBO yesterday. The shop. And Kevin Hart, yeah, Kevin Hart getting a lot of heat. Oh, yeah, I know you was on that. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah. Kevin Hart was getting a lot of heat. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I watched it. I saw it. <laughs> Yo, step it up, Sean. Step it up, bro. Yo. Just letting you know I was there. No, I'm glad you, I'm glad you let us know because I ain't heard shit about you on there. I hear by everybody by over the, there, but by, by the way, by the way, I started all the fire conversations. Let's be clear. <laughs> Let's be clear. 
All the conversation, the goat conversation, the mental health conversation. That was a three hour long episode. Yeah, that's funny. The they just they just cut yes. you out all the Twitter videos. Dude, Dude that's, that's fucked up. Scooter Shar. That's fucked up. I was on there prospering. What happened? A well, lot of good shit. Well, he came out there with, with, with no heat this morning, like Kevin got. That's right. Kevin, he in a, he in a fucking hospital bed right now. Bro, back off, bro. You know, you know the bro. worst part about that? Fuck up. You getting defensive. You sound like Jesus around some training talk, bro. I'm just, <laughs> you getting very defensive right now. The word, yeah. the, I'm going to take when the trans dude pulls out his dick, he's like, showtime! <laughs> what the oh, fuck? Where did that come from? I don't know what that was. <laughs> what? Showtime! <laughs> You talking about he's from the Bronx? Like the dude on the subway? He's from the Bronx? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Because he's from the Bronx. He's you a know, subway performer. <laughs> Can we get some context, guys? I mean, Jesus Christ. Can we get some context? He's saying the trans dude is like a subway performer because he's from the Bronx, so he gets on the train. You never been on the subway, bro? Uh, nah, not a long time. Oh, uh, that shit is well, wild. Well, listen. <laughs> 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 Actually, the last time I took the subway nah, was right earlier this year <laughs> when I had to go ring the bell at uh, the stock exchange. There you go. That's so funny. Yeah, I took the train because I had to be there at a certain time. Wait, you rang the bell at the stock exchange earlier this year when iHeart went public, and they still didn't include you in none of these shop clips, dude. That's fucked. That's all wild, shop clips. son. Yo, well, I thought it was disrespectful, bro. That what? Yo, you saw me just take my hood and throw it back like a girl. Yeah, right. why did well, I was about to say like, what was you? <laughs> no, I was I'm gonna disrespect my guy. Listen, let's talk about the Kev shit for a minute though. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you yeah. why I thought that was fucked up. Yeah. Two reasons. Kev mad drunk. We always drunk. <laughs> but first of all, Little Nas X should have never been put in that situation, mm -hmm. right? And I'm gonna tell you why he should have mm -hmm. never been put in that situation. He should have never been put in that situation because what Kev said is absolutely true. We don't care. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. if you want to have a, a a moment with Little Nas X talking about his sexuality, make that a real moment. Uh, yeah. Like, if we were all in a barbershop for real and we was all drinking, I wouldn't be asking him about his goddamn sexuality. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nobody else in there got asked about their sexuality. You know what I'm saying? Nobody in there got... Kev didn't get asked about his infidelity or anything. So, like, why bring that up? But I don't think people got mad at him getting asked about it. I think people got mad because he was so dismissive and, and it, it was like oh that's his homophobia speaking no, out no that was a little out of context and the reason it was a little out of context because what we was trying to tell little Nas X is bro it's cool like we, you don't have to talk about that here if you don't want to the kid is 20 years old do you really think he's comfortable with his sexuality and, and have to live that out in the public eye like, you say something like that, and then immediately social media is all over you, calling you gay and the, the, the F word I mean, and all kind of other stuff. I mean, he's kind of took like, it in stride. He was the one making most of the jokes himself when he first came yeah, out. Yeah, but how do we know yeah. we don't, How do we know he's not at home crying? Uh, we don't. You understand what I'm saying? Like, we don't know. So it's just like, why put him in the hot seat? And by the way, let's not act like that's just that was a regular conversation. That was for TV. That was, that was, that was a producer question. Like, that make was, sure you ask Lil Nas this point. so we oh. can get these moments. You know that, though. Anybody that, that does content and does media, you know that. So why? Mm. Why? What, what, what was the meaning of that? That conversation went nowhere. All it did this morning was cause a bunch of uproar for what? Oh, when yeah. you had so many other great discussions going on. Yo, you can't even really talk about these issues. That's the tricky thing. It's like, and that's, the that's, second yeah. you bring up trans, second you bring up anything homosexual, like, and even the discussion itself becomes some hot button topic. Like, it's it's actually exhausting. Yeah. yeah. I get exhausted by the fact that you oh, can't even ask a fucking question. You should Yo, listen, if we was being honest, we should have had, and I mean, I'm not a producer on the show, so I don't know, yeah. but I would have had Paul ask Kev about his homophobic tweets from back in the day. Boom. What did he learn from it? Yes. Lil Nas X, how did you feel when you saw that? And then you can have a good conversation. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like that. Like, why do, you do I just put him on the spot about but his see, even, even I even think that would get him even more fucked up. I think so too. I think it would have got him more fucked up because the thing with Kev is, for him, it doesn't matter what he says. Because mm. anybody, especially with the, the Dave Chappelle shit, with the dollhouse and all that type of stuff, right after that, no matter what he said, People yeah. are gonna find some shit to get on Kevin about, and yeah. that's what they did with this episode last night. Yeah. All he simply said was, "He came out and said he was gay. Who cares?" Yeah. Which is a great, it's a new drop for the breakfast. Club. <laughs> that's our new pause, by the way. Wait, Whenever somebody says anything gay remotely gay, 
You go, who cares? <laughs> no, we playing the Kevin Hart drop. Oh, I love it. <laughs> okay, okay. You know what I'm saying? It's funny. a great drop. Yeah. You know what I mean? But no. that is the truth to the matter. I like how a- 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 Lil Nas gave a pushback, though. He was like, because Kev tried to act like there's no homophobia. Boom. Now, that would have been a great conversation. Yeah. I like that because he was like, bro, if you, I like how he kind of checks that, his camera. Yo, but we goes, said he's right. I know. I, I was like, yo, I you said did, was right. but like, he was like, but if they you cut you out all the clips is the problem. That's the thing. Shut up. But I was like, yo, you right. Like, we can't act like pause and don't Homo didn't exist. I wish that made it to air, Sean. That would have been an important conversation. I, they should have given you more respect over there. Sean. They did. Dude, no, nah, that was fucked they, yeah, up. Yeah, right, uh, like off camera, like a producer. <laughs> you yeah, had producer nothing. respect. That was uh, great. And uh, even the seat you were in had had your name on the back, like the director's chair. I don't even think you were supposed to be in the shot. <laughs> did, did you notice? <laughs> well, I'll tell you. I'll tell you, I was proud of my performance. <laughs> I wish I could be. I love this emotionally stable Charlemagne, bro. I was good. I hate this, bro. <laughs> I, we just make fun of you, and you're like, you know what? I, I'm here. I did well. Listen, <laughs> I did well. That, HBO, that's listen, investing in HBO your mental. HBO made wealth. a meme of me. <laughs> <laughs> they made a meme of me in one of my quotes from the show. Hey, wait, what did it say? <laughs> Have you seen this well, man? Since you, well, listen, well, listen, well, listen. Since you guys asked, hold on, hold on, hold on. Well, that's, that's not meme. That's missing. <laughs> well, hold on. Since you guys asked, oh, um, oh, I don't man. remember what the fuck it was. <laughs> I'm saying like yeah, you're not you're not gonna find that. But I did feel like they taking Kev out of context based off his and I'm gonna tell you what else you I got like, an Amber Alert Charlemagne <laughs> is I was God. there. <laughs> it was Kaz really set you up, bro. Listen, Kaz set you all up I was all bro. I was that trying was, to say when this conversation bro. started was yeah, that man. when I see those conversations happen, yes. I don't look at being like, oh, Kevin Hart's homophobic. I just look at, oh, this is somebody who just hasn't been educated enough. Kevin Hart's why don't some people just fucking educate? Educated him? on what though? Here's, just like why the yeah. way he, why people. <sighs> All right, people get mad at him with the homophobic comments. Back to whatever. Up. There's a high requirement for homophobia. I think, I, and I, I really do believe in no, this. No, I, I, I agree. Kevin, Kevin and racism. Too. And ra- it's like it's like when a kid says something bad. It's like it's not affecting yeah. really anybody. And <laughs> sexism. It's like any short. gay guy afraid of Kevin Hart? All these gay guys will beat the fucking shit out of Kevin Hart. Yo. Come on. Oh, That's probably why Kevin Hart jogging all the time. <laughs> Get the fuck away. Like, he can't run out of breath. <laughs> Yo, real talk. I just, think, I just think that we're so quick to label people things that yeah. they aren't. Like I'm reading uh, I just finished reading Malcolm Gladwell's new book It's called Talking to Strangers It comes mm-hmm. out I think September 10th And it's it's about uh, Communication mm-hmm. and How nobody has it Anymore in 2019 2020 We don't know how to communicate With each other Anymore So I think the subtitle Is like the things you Should know about the people You don't know And we try to judge people Based off demeanor Like that's the problem With police officers And everything Like you might be sitting there Gray hoodie Thick thighs <laughs> <laughs> you know, looking at me like that and I'm like damn who is this motherfucker that look like he beat up Jesse Smollett but on the inside he's hurting yeah because of a tragic situation you might to, I'm just saying like we all yeah. we, demeanor we just we look at somebody's demeanor and we think that we can judge a person that's wrong and I think that we do that with Kev just because Kev said no oh, why do you think he's gay how does that translate to homophobia I think Kev was trying to cover for the whatever he's been labeled as homophobic in the past and try to be like, I don't care. Yeah. I think his that's mind he was read, trying to say, calculate, 100%. how do I prove to everybody that I don't care if somebody's gay? Yeah. I'm going to just be like, yo, who cares? You're gay. Big deal. Because it's not a big deal to me. That's what he's what? trying to do. And it didn't come across You're probably like that. right. But guess what? I definitely didn't give a fuck. Yeah. I definitely didn't care. Who like cares? all the different conversations we could be having right now. Yeah. Why are we putting this little, this young man on the spot? Do you think you would have cared more if he was more thick? <laughs> if he was thick yeah like if he had that <laughs> fucking hocks right there dog these ham hocks I'm gonna be honest Dude. with you you know God. the I'm, I'm cast like, the body this makes famuide <laughs> cast the body famuide everybody knows like a stallion bro everybody knows <laughs> cast dog. the stallion bro. you the chariot you're not even a stallion you're the, you're the shit being dragged by the horse bro you're and playing the the fucking games with these people out here and Charlamagne wanna be your gladiator uh, <laughs> yeah, everybody knows how I like my gay men so I'm uh, boat, I like them loud, okay. <laughs> I like them loud and outrageous, <laughs> flamboyant. I do. Not even just yeah, not yeah. even flamboyant. Like you can, mm. I just like you to be loud. Like I like the gay man that like don't. you can see the gay from a mile away. Yes, yeah. the guy that walks yeah. in the room and be like, oh, yeah. <laughs> look at you in those little gray short pants. <laughs> 
I'm not gonna lie, I felt kind of turned on just now. <laughs> I was like, I like that, I like that compliment. Like my homeboy Terrence, man. Terrence, who cares? Who cares? Who cares? He said he was gay. Who cares? Who cares? Like for real. I like the, I like my, I like him loud yeah. and aggressive. And and if we go, if you're gonna be it. Like yo, be it the way men are with yo, women. It, oh, you you That's want some best. sexual You want to be cat called. You want to oh, be cat called. Hey, yeah. Why not? You don't think we deserve a little objectification? The, the gay compliments do hit a little different. Men? They do hit. The gay different. compliments definitely hit yeah, different. Yeah. They make you feel good. It feels right, good right, a little right. bit. You like y'all like that? Y'all like is that gay? Yeah. <laughs> it hits you differently. <laughs> you mean like in your loins? <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't make you feel good there. They pay attention to detail. Yeah, they pay attention to detail. They they compliment shit on you that you don't think you like. They don't notice like, like what like, like Charlie, my skin you got nice cheekbones yeah, yeah. yeah. I, do, I do use what a stringent <laughs> y'all bet you love being around gay people when you're exfoliating your face That's that shit right, they were man. noticing every one of them they got it they've been dude. noticing my tan all day you do. You have a tan. Is that what you call it? I went to Turks and Caicos is that what you call it I went to Mexico <laughs> no I Mexico this weekend yeah Oh, I saw the Instagram picture. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that was dope. It was nice. It was you nice. Your hat. It, yes, now it's my glasses. Your glasses. I went yeah, jet skiing yeah, for the yeah, first yeah. time. Shit flew up. Shut the fuck up, Akash. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking comedian. You and Andrew, you fucking comedian. You fucking. You fucking. You fucking. Just let it sail out of bounds. You goddamn Just fucking. Just let it sail out of bounds. Comedian. Right? I had the two. fuck is wrong with y'all? Put the bullet I'm glad you didn't go for the low hanging fruit. Bro. Not at all. Yeah. We're not doing this. I'm glad one, you didn't bro. go for the low hanging fruit. Bro, oh no, I had some fruit that was up high, man. I had a real high one. My shit was mad low, son. No, I was going to go no, for it. My shit was at the top. Oh, you need to okay. be drafted. Let's do a little, in, okay, let's do a little inside jokes. He wants it. 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 He it's not fruit, it's an apple. It's these apple to you. Break down, break down in a constructive way <laughs> what this so joke was going to be. Give I, me, I, 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 I said, give me, give me the. I, can't, nah, nah, I no, said Cass lost his hat. It's too loud. It's too loud. I said Cass lost his hat. Cass says, no, I lost his glasses. <laughs> Boom, go. Nah, nah. It's, no, I was like, going somewhere totally different. <laughs> I was going somewhere totally different. Okay, never different. mind. What were y'all thinking? <laughs> Nothing. What were y'all thinking? I was about? thinking about White nah, Castle. Say what? White Castle. What about? And they're frozen foods. Ah. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a reason they made a movie about two men defying great odds to get some White Castle sliders. Mm. Yeah, they're really that crave worthy. And you've been a bachelor for a while, so I know you fuck with White Castle. I got a shorty now. Oh, shit, for real? Why you stop, bro? Ooh. Welcome to the club. Wow. Come on, dog. You know how I do. So you make the, the, those delicious sliders at home now with wifey. You know. Yeah, White Castle's microwavable sliders, okay? Uh, from the grocery store. All right, they have that one of a kind taste that White Castle has been serving in their restaurants for me for years. All right, from their unique signature buns, has <laughs> their hundred percent beef patties, which are cooked on a bed of steam grilled onions. These sliders come in a variety of flavors that are made to be enjoyed. All right, you craving something spicy? The jalapeno cheese sliders are sure to give you a day that tasty kick in needs. Or if you're hungry for something a little more traditional, there's cheese sliders are the perfect choice. From the castle or the grocery store, you can satisfy your crave anytime with White Castle. Go to whitecastle.com/idiots to get one dollars off the purchase of any four of six pack White Castle sliders. God bless. Okay, we back. We got another one, don't we? Oh, we do? Oh, you're right. My bad, my bad, my bad. Guys, Yeezys, Go. Jordans, Off-Whites. If you're buying sneakers for $100 online, how can you be sure if they're the real thing? Goat.com is the safest way to buy and sell authentic sneakers online. They're the largest marketplace in the world for authentic Yeezys, Jordans, and over 600,000 sneaker listings. They've made the whole process frictionless and trustworthy. Goat does this by only accepting sellers with the best reputation and by verifying all sneakers to ensure their authenticity for buyers. Every detail is inspected. From the stitching and color to the size, the weight, GOAT certifies that every pair of sneakers on their site matches exact factory specifications. With over a million sneakers on the platform, 10 million users, you won't find better prices for verified 100% authentic sneakers anywhere else. Find the perfect 100% 
authentic sneaker at goat.com slash idiots. That's goat.com slash idiots. Plus, you'll also be supporting our show, but you got to go right now before the sneakers you want are gone when you go to goat.com slash idiots, G-O-A-T dot com slash idiots. Speaking of goats, can we talk about another great conversation that I started on the shop last oh, week? Let's talk oh, about please. it. <laughs> Um, I, I saw you start that conversation. Which, which, which one? The <laughs> which goat one? gene. Say what? Does it exist? Is Does there a goat gene? Is it genetic? <clears throat> no, I'm not saying it's genetic, but well, maybe it has to be genetic, right? It has to be something in your DNA that makes you superior to the rest, right? And I mean, you know, uh, Kev- Kevin Hart said that Sounds anybody very Hitler-ish, can be a by goat. The way. <laughs> Sounds very Hitlerish, by the way. Is he there a gene gonna, inside there of you? There is something inside of you that makes you better than the rest. I'm going to push back on that one. Um, I want to be right. There is a look and there is a feel to certain human beings that makes them wow. superior. You do no, that accent very well. I don't and it think makes normalizing Hitler it's is the funny. <laughs> I don't think normalizing Hitler is funny. Hitler should not be a punchline. Well... <laughs> Yo, that was the best joke. That, well, not the best, but I love that Chappelle bit when he goes, uh, when he said the normalizing shit. Yeah. Why yes. is it when I make, what was it? I said that last week. What was it? What? When he was like the transgender or transsexual, Stop, the trans person That's said, up. said, uh, Yo, when they, when you make jokes about R. Kelly, they say you're normalizing R. Kelly. When you make jokes about us, why don't why don't they say you're normalizing us? Ah, the trans By the way, person. Nobody wants that. to answer that question. Of course. Mm. Nobody wants to answer the question. So anyway, nobody wants to answer the Chappelle question when he said, Why is it okay to use the N-word a million times? But when you say the F word, I can't do that. But those are those are uh that was a false equivalency in that joke. No, I don't think it was he didn't you he did, that wasn't the, he didn't make no equivalency. Well, the joke was you can say the M word. Mm-hmm. He's like, you can't say the F word because you're not gay. And mm-hmm. then he responds, Well, Diane, I'm not an M word. But the argument is you are black, so you can use your derogatory term just like a gay guy can use but his I think, derogatory term. I think term. the point is still love why the joke, why but. any derogatory terms, period. Right. If, if if you're the, the woman, I don't know if the woman is gay or not, but I'm assuming she's not. But an executive will not allow you to do that. Yeah. So right. if an executive who's straight won't allow you to use a gay slur, an executive yeah. who's white shouldn't allow you to use an N word. So he's like, no, that's not. Yeah, acceptable. but then he'd be like, how are you going to tell me I can't use this word that was used to oppress me for my entire life? I'm trying to change them. You know what I mean? You that's can all, easily that's the reason that you on. shouldn't use it. You just answered your own question. Mm. It's been used to oppress you your entire life. You, you don't use it, huh? You don't use it. Not really. I try not to. Try not to. Okay. Yeah. That sounds like. But it feels good. Like, that's, that's a good word. That's a good word. I'm not word. You just said it. Yeah. 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 So yeah. If I say N word cookies, you'd be like Nabisco? Like, nah, nigga. Like, Nilla <laughs> wafers is what I would think. <laughs> yeah, I was the one with Nilla wafers. Listen, let's talk about the goat gene, though. <laughs> yes. Let's is talk there about a goat gene? Because I feel no matter how hard you work, right? No matter how much time you put in the gym, no matter how much time you put in the studio, no matter how much time you put in the stage, if you're not a goat, you just won't be a goat. And mm. and and and, and uh, I told Kevin Love, I said, "Well, Kev, what is LeBron doing that you're not doing? If you if it's just hard work, because Kev, you're six foot ten, mm-hmm. two hundred thirty pounds. That you can average twenty and ten at used to at one point. So what is LeBron doing that you're not doing? That he's LeBron and you're Kevin Love, right? Like, what do you say? I don't remember. <laughs> Oh, this is Kevin Love. Shot. This is yeah. a different Kevin. I was when you were saying Kevin, I was like, hey, well, Kevin Hart said, well, Kevin Hart thinks." It's with work ethic, anybody can be a GOAT. I don't think so. No. I, th- I, I do think, think there's a chosen few. I think there's a chosen few. I think there's people that you, if you work hard enough, you can get to a certain level, but there's only like a certain amount of people that are just the chosen. I think both those things are kind of genetic in a certain way. There's a makeup mentally of people who have the GOAT ability that is... I don't care. I want greatness at all costs. Yeah. I don't need personal relationships. I don't need friends. I don't need none of this. I just need to work and be great. I think I th- Kobe had that. I yes. think MJ had that. Yes. They had the ability, but they also got that mentality. I think Kevin Hart does that to a certain degree where it's like, look, I'll outwork fucking everyone. And he's naturally quick and funny, and there you go. I think there's like a small part of like sociopath in you. Yeah. If, if you need to be great. Like, you say you're doing all that shit. Like, you saying, like, you will do anything to be this great. But, like, mm. are you really? Like, yeah. Michael Jordan would... You, like, we say, oh, man, he'll, like, run over his mother for a point. But, like, no, this motherfucker really will. Mm. <laughs> and, he, and he has. Kobe, same guy. LeBron, Kobe I think he has the same type of sociopathism Ever. in him. But it just comes off a little bit more charismatic. It's not like Kobe where he's like, oh, man, this guy's such a fucking asshole. Nobody wants to play with him. Mm-hmm. I think LeBron's just more cerebral with his. Than That's what like Kevin Love was saying. And I, I mean, I, you know, I, I think 
because you know the conversation started with me talking to Grunt. <laughs> And um, I said it with me, right? And with me <laughs> talking to Gronk. And um, I said, I, cause Gronk was talking about Tom Brady. And I was like, bro, like, I said, can you really learn something from people like Tom Brady and LeBron? Yeah. And the reason I said that is because they can push you, but they're pushing you to try to be as great as them. But can you really be? Mm-mm. Tom Brady's a fucking anomaly. Yeah. The guy's 42 years old. He just won a Super Bowl last year. You're not going to see that again in this lifetime, no, probably. Nobody's going to push you to be the GOAT. I think that's the competitive advantage if you got the gene. Like, let's say it's a gene. The gene is that you're willing to sacrifice more than anybody else. And I think if you look at any GOAT, they've sacrificed more than anybody around them. Yeah. You know, and... Um, when you're willing to sacrifice, you stay in the gym. When you're willing to sacrifice, you study harder. When you're willing to sacrifice, you do what Tom Brady does. You find every competitive advantage you do in a game. I remember, I think you even brought this up, Akash, like uh, Kobe was studying shark movements. Yes, because yeah. he couldn't guard Allen Iverson. Allen yeah. Iverson, yeah. He, he said he kind of moves like a shark out there, so he started studying shark movements to get some sort of competitive advantage playing D against Allen Iverson. Now, that's the psychotic Jesus makeup. Right. Right? But, like, that's what you need to <laughs> have. Right. That's what it takes. That's the, that's the shit it takes. So it's like you got to apply that to everything that you do. Like they said, Peyton Manning would go through every single play at the end of every year, every single play that he did. Most people don't want to do that. Most people are not going to listen to every set of their stand-up. Most people are not going to listen to every interview. Most people are not going to put in the fucking hard work. Most people want to hang out with their boys. What about the person who does all of that, but they still not a goal? You got to have They're both, just good. So, so here's the thing. I, I don't think... That's where I think shit doesn't exist. I don't think... Um, I don't think that people have that kind of work ethic if it's not matched with ability. Mm. And I think I think that's where you. I don't think there's a guy who works as hard as Kobe, but he's just kind of like okay, and he plays at the YMC, at YMCA. I think eventually you give up because even if you're because even the goatest of goats needs positive reinforcement. You got to see some sort of tangible. You got to see results, results bro. yeah. And if like, you're not seeing results, you're like fuck this. I'm not going to do that. LeBron probably saw himself at like the fifth or sixth grade, fucking dunking on motherfuckers, mm-hmm. and it was like okay, like I have a superior I have skill to these people. Let me hold it. Yeah, like you're not even like some people aren't even in that club yeah. of like talent where you can even think oh. to be like, yeah. okay, but if I put go. in the work, if I do everything humanly possible, I can achieve this level. And some people still don't think LeBron's really achieved that level. Maybe because he thinks a little differently. Maybe because he's it's a, it's a, a little bit of a, a nicer or, or seems to be a nicer guy than a Jordan is or a Kobe is. I, mean, I think it's gold like, tears though, right? Yeah. I mean, like I, said, like I said on this podcast before, I think it's, 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 it's great, it's kings, and it's gods. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I think LeBron is a king. Yeah. You know? Not wrong with king. What did Kevin Love say about him? He said his mentality. He said it's all mental. He said him, he said, he said LeBron would lock in in a way that he just that no like nobody else could. I put I put LeBron in a different type of like goat category though, because with him, you can tell that his interests kind of supersede sport. You know what I'm saying? Like he wants to be looked at on some some Ali shit. As as a, a voice, some Magic Johnson shit when that it comes don't to business. That don't matter about the court, though, baby. No, I mean, but on the I court, it, but nah, some not. people when when the game's over, the game's gonna end for everybody. Even there's people in this room right now yeah. that really don't remember Michael Jordan like that. You just say, "Oh yeah, he's the goat," but like you don't remember seeing him like that. Ooh, that, that's a ton of people. So some people, Michael Jordan's just the fucking guy in the crying face. He's just a meme to a lot of that's people. He's just a guy up. with the sneakers. By the way, that's a goat meme, though. It is. Come on now. <laughs> that's it a is. goat meme. A but goat to meme. a lot of people, like, they don't even... Goat meme, goat sneakers. Yes. On-court on attributes yeah. all fade away. It don't matter who you are. It don't matter where you're going, where you going, what you play. That shit fades away to, to everyone in everyone's memory eventually. When we talking about basketball, I agree with you. LeBron James is a god outside of that court. Yeah. Look, by the way, he's a god on it. On the court, But too. when you're comparing him to other gods, there's other gods that are strong. But what I'm saying is I think LeBron, the way he wants to achieve his GOAT status is trying to achieve all that at once. Because Kobe was an on the court well, we, we goat, but he wasn't that. that. We're talking about like just being elite in one field. On that court, baby. Yeah, we're on just that talking football about like field. a specific thing. Like comics. Like like Jeff Bezos could be the biggest jerk in terms of like how he treats his friends. But mm. I don't give a fuck about that. If you want to talk about a guy who like revolutionized business, mm. that motherfucker's a goat. But that's what yeah. I'm saying though. But that's what I'm saying though. Just because he, he's a basketball like if he's player. Doing philanthropy and shit. No, not not even just philanthropy. philanthropy. Yeah. I'm talking about like business. I'm just saying all this other shit. Like as that guy. We're talking about getting the ball. But that's the point of the goat. I'm saying if he's the 
first person to do that shit? The point of the GOAT mentality as we are defining it here is I want to be the greatest at this thing. Thing. Mm -hmm. One thing. Singular focus. Because LeBron can't be the greatest human ever. He's more well-rounded than Jordan, but he's not the GOAT human. Mm -hmm. He ain't Jesus. He can't Mm -hmm. get close to Jesus. You know what I mean? Allegedly. All, but I think Jesus might have been he, he within arm's reach of Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> when I was in Turks and Caicos this weekend, they have this stretch. It's, a, it's called Long Bay Beach. You can walk on that water out to, to, to 56 miles out. That is a fact. You think that's where Pe- Jesus was? Yes. People were so far out that I was like, yo, what the fuck is that? Until they explained to me that it's shallow for 56 miles out. But it looks like they're walking on water. That's all I'm saying. Jesus could have been in Turks and Caicos. Garden of Eden, paradise. Hmm? Was it? Or was that Israel? What was it? I mean, <laughs> I, I, I didn't read I enough of the Bible. I, bro. I, 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 I do agree with you in that he probably didn't walk on water. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. <laughs> that body of water would still exist, right? Maybe he was just the first brown dude that could swim, and everybody's like, "Yo, what the fuck is he doing on top of that water, son?" That's wild. Maybe they turned it into walking. That's a good point. That's the best argument for Jesus being black. <laughs> oh, God. He wasn't walking; he was just swimming, and all the and other. Everybody's black like, "It's like, a miracle!" <laughs> God damn. Yo, I'm sorry to use your name in vain, but this is crazy. <laughs> this is amazing. Dude, real talk, a lot of these things could have happened. It could not even have been water into wine. It could have been Mary's period. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Here's a, How much period do you think she uh, got, bro? So she made a uh, god. <laughs> you don't think that period's going to be brutal? She got god ovaries, dog. She got literal god ovaries. That is the wildest shit that we believe in, but it's amazing that they made people believe that shit. What? Is it though that Mary got pregnant and didn't fuck? Me? I don't like Is Charlemagne it hanging out there with white people of... finding logical flaws in the Bible. That ain't Charlemagne. <laughs> I, I always love, found bro. logical what flaws in the Bible. What about Epstein committing suicide? People believe that. They believe. They really believe he committed suicide. We don't care. <laughs> Yo, we well, don't and, and care. Back, you know somebody we cared about? We be digging like, and investigating. Ah, fuck that pedophile. Like, nobody cares. But it's easy care. to make people believe yeah. that shit, though. What, that he committed suicide? No, but it's just like, you know, walking on water, water in the wild. Back in like 33 AD, all you had to do was convince like, what, 40 people of something? Yeah, it wasn't Now it's like billions of people. Yeah. And now even you got some, Twitter. If you had Twitter back then, you couldn't believe, make nobody nah, believe Nah, somebody shit. just take a picture and like, no, nah, that didn't happen. And, and that's it. But back then, it was just like that for centuries. I feel like it's easier to believe wild shit with Twitter. Think yes. of all the things we believe. That's what he's saying. It'd be easier now. Yeah. Pay attention mm. to gosh. Yeah. I don't know. Bro, I don't know, man. I'm treating you like the shop, son. I'm not listening to nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I was on there ripping, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I got to see this episode now. I'm in every scene. It was a good episode. It was a good episode. Can, <laughs> episode. Like, <laughs> I'm, giving out bar, I'm giving out bars in every scene. I don't know what the fuck Cox is talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, nobody put it on Twitter. No one seems to care. It's like the tree that fell in the forest. No, you know what I mean? No, nobody no, seems to have heard your bars. <laughs> no, they was giving it up, baby. Yo. <laughs> okay, they was giving it up. <laughs> Lil Nas X's sexuality did body that episode for no reason right that's an old trick by the way yeah. like, you're not tired of hearing that, but that's what I mean when I say nobody cares we're not tired of hearing about that type of shit already. Yeah. Like, you know how like, tight Charlotte was like, when he went on Twitter that night and he was like let me check my mentions and I was slapping shit up in his no, episode my- and the whole thing was just <laughs> I was actually kind of shocked what you mean I was like I would think that they would be happy that it wasn't a thing. Like, right. I would think that people would be happy that we didn't care. Yeah, we weren't being dismissive of him. We just yeah. like, yo, salute Keep to you. Moving. You want to live your truth? That's yeah. what's up. Like, I I that's like not enough point, anymore. Though, that he said, that's not enough anymore it, in 2019. This is a good point that he said, uh, I want to do it at my peak because some people do it at their lowest as like some savior tactic. Oh, uh, that's so, yeah, we were talking about that. that wasn't, oh, yo, the thing that got me was he said right before that, he was like, yo, I know I'm never going to have the number one song in the country again for 18 weeks and I was like yo I'm glad you know that like that's that's a better conversation because yeah. we need to be there. what's he gonna do after this what's life after Old Town Road is gonna look like when you got a record that fucking big what do you think it will happen bro I really don't know I've never I'm seen that shit for the rest of his life man well, that's we, gonna be that's the new Old McDonald How to Farm they're gonna teach that shit in kindergartners they're really? gonna graduate to that shit that song is gonna outlive us all by the way, uh, that's what the, would you that, do with him? That's if a, you're his manager, well, what would you do well, with him? Well, here's the thing. That's another conversation they cut out. Because I was asking him, are you making money? Because mm. that's a $100 million record. Easy. You know what I mean? Did you give it all away? I don't know. I don't know what his deal looked like with whoever he signed to. Like, did they take all his publishing? Like, mm. is he getting royalties? Like, is he going to make money off that record? So he, he, he should have made at least 4 or $5 million. He, he was like, yeah, of course I'm making money. 
but it wasn't like yeah. a... Oh, yeah, 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 I'm making yeah, money. Yeah, 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 like, and I'm yeah, like, bro, do you know how much money this record is making? Mm. Yeah, that's a different conversation. Like, mm. it screams. It screams. Hey, by the way, does he need? Did he need a label for that? No. Oh, Tyro was gone already. That shit was red hot before I even heard about him signing to a label. Did he need a? I've still never seen the video. Like, what did a label really do for old? The first time Rowe? I saw the video was at the Video Music Awards. Hmm. <laughs> that was the first time I saw the video. Did you go to the VMAs? Nah. I got Man. invited, but I didn't want to go. VMA fell off, bro. I don't right. even know who the fuck the host care. was. Who was that? Oh, Sebastian. Sebastian no, Sebastian's Manikowski. funny as fuck. I've never heard of him ever in my life. I don't life. know why. Can you hit that right there? I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Oh. I got it. So, I've um, never heard of him ever in my life. No, Sebastian's a great comedian. He was put in... I think a horrible situation. I mean, those things are the hardest fucking things to do, man. We've been to a million of these things. You cannot do jokes. Dog, when we were growing up, it was a roast. It was the best. <laughs> yeah, but like, even then... The bar was set really fucking high, though. It's not even bar. Yeah, Chris it's, Rock it's not even bar. Shit. Back then, I, I really think maybe that we were more privy to stand-up. I mean, I remember being a kid and being into stand-up. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if kids like stand-up in the same way. I think they like Instagram comics or they like little sketches, but I don't... I was a young fan of Chris Rock. I had That's his fair. books. I was into it. What's that? Listening. What's, what do you mean? We had better listening skills back then. But I think we there was an interest at a, young, at a young age. I think people were interested, and I don't think these kids care about stand-up at a young you. age. But, not, but I think I think the reason the interest was higher is because people were listening with the intent to understand. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, they're listening with the intent to reply. Right, mm -hmm. right, right. Well, right, right. They're not even trying to hear what you're saying. Mm -hmm. they just like, right, right. as soon as they hear a word that sets them off, oh, mm -hmm. right, he right. said the F word. Oh, he said this. And that. They're not even listening with the intent to understand. They just want to reply. They want to be a part of the fucking show. And yeah. we make them a part of the show by writing all of these articles after the fact. Yeah. By taking their tweets and putting them in the articles and like, oh, see what he said about Kevin talking about Lil Nas X? Like, ah, that shit is whack. We yes. grew up, we yeah. grew up in, the, in the age of information. And right now we're in the, engage, the age of engagement. Yes. Where we would just want everybody to be a part of something because that's how people make money now. That's yeah. how people well, how do we involved. How do we articulate to, to the youth that what they feel is useless and meaningless? <laughs> Like literally meaningless. Don't pay him no attention. Also, you're not entitled to an opinion. You don't deserve an no, opinion. No, you can have yes, an, you are an opinion. opinion. No, 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 no. You can have an opinion. It's just meaningless. Yeah. Like how you feel means nothing. How I feel means nothing. How you feel means nothing. How you feel means nothing. Our feelings really mean fucking nothing. Well, you can't. It's easy to say, but when you got motherfucking people reacting. To what people are saying on social media and you got celebrities apologizing and, you know, people backtracking on stuff and people losing the dumb stuff. Yes, you make you feel like your opinion is validated. Like it mm -hmm. doesn't feel like your, your word means you something. You have to earn an opinion in public. I don't think you should just. Be you used to be. To you used to be able to take it seriously. You used to be able no, to when I, I, when words yeah. on paper used to used to you used to have to pay for that shit. Yeah, magazines, books, all that type of stuff. And that was the only way you could get media. Yeah, you used to have to earn your opinion. Like, why do I care what this person has to say? Oh well, he wrote this, this, that, and the third. He did this. Let right. me read that now. Now way, everybody has that shit. Yeah, and podcasts wouldn't exist if that was the case, Akash. Because you got a whole bunch of motherfuckers just opening up microphones and talking and giving their opinion. Well, as a stand-up, <laughs> I feel like I earn an opinion because I go on stage and I say what I feel and 95% of the audience can kick my ass and I still say it. So, <laughs> I feel like I, I don't earn think a opinion. lot of people know you a stand-up, though. Well, they're going to find out. Ooh, yeah, 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 yeah. I like but that. At the same time, it is something that you're doing, right? Like yeah. there is some sort of qualification. I disagree with you. I think anybody should be able to have an opinion. But I think that if we it's need fire. To, it don't mm. matter if it's fire or not. I think we just need to realize that like just uh, your opinion is meaningless. Like when people there's no say, power behind there's it. There's nothing. It means nothing. It, yeah. it means nothing. It just only, it only away, it means nothing. No, I don't think I, I don't like think it, restaurant. Like, I don't, the fact that you can review restaurants on Yelp, <laughs> what kind of fat fucking loser <laughs> is so like bothered by their restaurant experience that they're gonna go on Yelp and write a fucking review. Not gonna lie, I love a good Yelp review. Fuck. Yo. I love a good Yelp review, oh, guys. I hate it. I will go read a few I Yelp reviews. I hate it. Reviews. I'm not gonna it lie to you. Crazy. I, sometimes I hate read them. Well, the uh, the wait staff was all right. <laughs> you need to give a mediocre fucking Yelp review, bro. You need to take your time and do that. Unbelievable! I did a man. show for Yelp, and I told them, guys, I don't even respect professional critics, dude. What the no, fuck no, makes no, you think amateurs. I'm gonna respect amateur? No. Work for free dude, critics. That's a great point. Even like when we look at professional critics, when we literally look at yeah. the movie critics, all these people. Who are the professionals them, now, though? Son, let, I gotta show this this image. Did you guys see what happened with the fucking? Um, not only Dave Chappelle, but there's another. Okay, so 
there were two documentaries or two things. One was the Dave Chappelle thing, Rotten Tomatoes. You guys know what Rotten Tomatoes yeah. is? Yeah. Okay, so Rotten Tomatoes gives, first of all, no score to oh, Dave gosh. Chappelle, right? Like right. the tomato meter or whatever. Yeah. Now they do two scoring systems. One is by their reviewers, yeah. whatever, and then the other is by the people. They got a lot of flack for not giving any score for Chappelle. So they let seven people review it. The score was 24%. Then they let the people review it. 100%. 99%. And see, that's my problem. And this is what we got to start realizing. Social media, the internet, that shit is not really the market, bro. I don't no. give a fuck what people think. Very like That point. shit is not the Very market. That shit it's hard is to a... keep in mind because it's so in your face, though. Yes, but mm. it's not the market. Yeah. The market will always determine whether or not you're good because that shouldn't even be fair. At the end of the day, people should be critiquing Dave Chappelle's art. Yep. They should be Sorry. critiquing... Andrew's art. They should be critiquing Kaz's thighs. Like, they should be critiquing, <laughs> like, what, what it is that we do. Right. Fuck if you're offended by it. Fuck if words. Fuck all that. D was it good? Yep. That's it. Um, I knew Rotten Tomatoes was, knocked, was some shit. This Knock Down the House. Have you guys heard of this documentary? The what? Knock Down the House. Have you heard of this? Was that about the Three Little Pigs? <laughs> <laughs> What's it about? It's about uh, the squad. Oh. <laughs> okay. <But> maybe Trump <laughs> calls him that. <laughs> oh, the squad. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, gotcha. But it's right. it's it was on Netflix, right? Exactly. Right. So or something. And uh the tomato meter, which is the in house version for Rotten Tomatoes, one hundred percent. The audience score, thirty five percent. Dave Chappelle's tomato meter, twenty nine percent. The audience score ninety nine percent. The point is, there is an agenda, and these companies are attached to a bigger Hollywood matrix, and they decide what the fuck is good and what the fuck isn't good. And the beauty of the internet is, they are watching this shit crumble right in front of them, dude. Mm. Like yeah, their whole true. their whole way of like molding what we like and what we enjoy and what content is good and the the, the stars that they want to be stars. All that power is falling apart right in front of their eyes and is absolutely hilarious to watch. Because the power is truly with the fucking people. That's it. And you know who needs to learn this Twitter shit the most is advertisers. If they learned what you're saying, Twitter isn't the market. It's not the market, baby. Who, we don't need to respond to some angry tweets that are outraged. It's then a market. Everything goes it's back to the normal. market. It's, 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 it's a it's I think it's, it's a, a small, small, small yeah. slither of... A market. And Every I, article that's this is outrage, it's like five tweets from people being outraged. And then you got <laughs> enough for an article, and then the article yes. gets enough more people to be like, well, well I'm a little. Yo, then you got a thousand people. people. It's a thousand. I read an article this morning. Fat women with short hair. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the only people writing these articles, and they're the only people that have complaints about these opinions. If you I just ignore articles, them. Anytime I see those articles, I'm reminded why Beyonce hates her fans. Oh, 100%. <laughs> yeah, but you got some people nowadays, it. man, like they're a pin. Like, you know, we, you, know how we, you know how we clown Magic Johnson yeah. because Magic Johnson says the most obvious shit. Yes. You got a group of woke tank clan, woke tank clan right? <laughs> woke and, tank and, and, clan. And woke tank clan, I know exactly what their take is going to be yeah, on Lord. any situation. And I hate it because I got friends that are in the woke tank clan. And Same. I'm like, I do, I hate you right Same. now. You know why I hate you? Because I talk to you. <laughs> and I know, I know you. what you really know you, think, bro. you fucking performer. God. Stop already. It's a brand now. It's a, yes. it's a brand. It is People whack. Get, once I seen people, once I seen like woke warriors getting repped by like CAA and shit, <laughs> like, I'm like, for what? Like, where are you getting? You getting business to do this? I'm like, it's a brand for you now. Like, I know you. Like, I know how you think. I've had conversations with you. We drink together. I know how yes. you really think about a lot of this shit. But I know you're following. I know how you pay your bills, and I know you have to say certain things and write certain things because that is what. You've cultivated. Yo, but you know why it's feel like shit when you do that, like manipulating a bunch of people, making them feel horrible about themselves. I can tell you exactly when they're gonna feel it. They're gonna feel it when eventually those guns turn on them. Because what they don't and understand it about oh, it's, what, it's a yeah. circular it's firing squad. That yeah. woke shit. That shit is a circular firing squad. Because as soon mm. as you say something that they don't yep. like, yeah. brrr, they shooting at you now. They don't fuck with you. They fuck with your opinion. Mm. And the second your opinion diverges from what they agree with, yep. you are part of the food. That's You're what part I of the buffet. Mm. And they can get their retweets off based on you. That's why, the, here's the thing about what I've realized about woke, uh, the woke folk and the people who run the woke folk. It's the <laughs> easiest way to get a following, right? Because you tweet some woke shit, motherfuckers will retweet it because yep. they all want a virtue mm -hmm. signal. Look what a good person I am. But it's the quickest way to lose. Oh, me. for sure. Think about the, the people who've gotten following. it this year. Bro, they gave it to Lena. Sean King. They gave it to Lena Wave. Sean, Sean King always gives it, but they give it to Lena Wave. Yeah. Wait, what happened? What happened with that? 
Uh, oh, they came at Lena. Dude what? from uh, dude from Straight Outta Compton. The Jason shit Mitchell. On the show. Jason Mitchell. Right, right, right. Bro, right. they get. They trying to. They trying <laughs> to. Up, get, they trying to get Jay Z the fuck out of here. Think about. Once it. I saw that yeah. shit, I was like, I'm, I'm done. I was fucking done after that. I was so glad I was on the podcast during that whole Jay Z <gasps> Kaepernick shit. I was like, I'm fucking done with you. Where were you, bro? I was home. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was home chilling, bro. He was taking was care of the situation. Oh, okay, bro. no, I was home yeah. chilling, bro. Let's, let's pay some bills. <laughs> let's pay some bills. You better than me, Cass, because I'd be like, man, that's, that, I don't know, that, that shit hurts. What hurt? Nothing. Oh yeah. Yo. I mean it does hurt, but you know. Yes. This is this is therapy for me. It feels good. Really? Getting back to normalcy. Yeah. You serious? Don't I swear say to God. that. Okay. No, I swear to God. I, like it was I was home just fucking, you know, I hate just being in just a fucking puddle of just sadness and depression and all that shit. I'm like, this makes me happy. This this Have is you spoken about what happened outside of Instagram? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I talk, well, I talked about it with, with Akash before for Flagrant Two for a little bit, and I think we'll talk about it a little why? bit more because because honestly, honestly, no, 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 not why I talk about it, but why would Akash? <laughs> like listen, you know this guy listen. wills a turn it. <laughs> You're a sociopath. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> In eight months, you're going to be hearing jokes about. Hey, well, you know, let's talk about lost people. But you, but you, <laughs> you know, know what? what? But you <laughs> know what? That eight that's, months that's, a long turnaround time to be honest. I like to give you more credit than that. I'm surprised it took this long. Pay these bills, I'm please. I'm sorry, Charlamagne. My bad. I needed that one. That was good. Pay these bills. Guys, Listen. that headline slowly starting to move backwards. All right. <laughs> the best way to prevent more hair loss is to do something about it while you still have some with 4 a one stop shop for hair loss, skin care, sexual wellness for men. Hims is helping guys be the best version of themselves with licensed physicians and FDA approved products to help treat hair loss. No snake oil pills or gas station counter supplements. Just answer a few quick questions a doctor will review. And if they determine it's right for you, they can prescribe you medication to treat hair loss that is shipped directly to your door. All right. What the fuck was that that just walked by? You saw that shit? What was what? <laughs> I thought that was the Christie show. <laughs> you, know, you know the Christy show on Instagram with the wig and the glasses and shit nah what's what that the, I don't know what the fuck that was order now <laughs> my listeners can get started with the Hems complete hair kit for just $5 today while supplies last and subject to doctor's approval see website for full details and safety information this could cost hundreds if you went to the doctor or our pharmacy somewhere else but go to 4 slash bi that's f-o-r-h-i-m-s dot com slash bi for hymns dot com slash bi also turn your dream into a reality with Square Squarespace. Squarespace makes it easier than ever to launch a passion project. Whether you're looking to start a new business, showcase your work, publish content, sell products, and more, Squarespace is the tool for you with beautiful templates created by world-class designers and the ability to customize just about anything with a few clicks. You can easily make a beautiful website yourself. Squarespace's powerful e-commerce functionality lets you sell anything online and analytics let, uh, help you grow in real time. Everything is optimized for mobile right out of the box, and there's nothing to patch or upgrade ever. Buying domains is simple and you'll get the help that you need with Squarespace's 24-7 award-winning customer support. Squarespace empowers millions of people from designers to lawyers, artists to gamers, even restaurants and gyms to turn great ideas into something real. Head to squarespace.com slash idiot for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code idiot to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash idiot. Offer code idiot. Back to the show. Yes, we gotta get out of here in a minute because y'all gotta record an episode of ah, Flagrant Two. I'm gonna ah. tell you something though, man. I'm gonna tell you, Kevin. I just thought about this. I don't feel good about this, and I'm gonna tell you why. Well, what's up? Because you're not alone in this situation. I know. So I don't know if you should be making jokes. I'm not making jokes. I'm I, these guys, man. I've been. I've just been receiving so much fucking like love in the past couple of weeks. <laughs> Wait, and, like, hold, on, hold on, hold on. What was the shit Kev said again? That needed a I'm just saying no. He's gay, okay. I mean, okay. This is a situation that usually hits the woman harder than it hits the man. So I don't want to be in here acting like we making light or something. No, I like, mean, we're not. I know Cass looked like he was carrying the baby, but. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's. All right, never mind. I'm sorry. <laughs> Stop. That was so good. All right. That was so good. I'm taking a knee. I'm taking a knee, bro. I can't. I gotta take a knee. I gotta. I'm take not. A I'm here, Charlamagne. Keep coming. I gotta take oh a gosh. Oh, nah. What's up? What? What is it? Oh, you get that? He said, "Wax is in here. Go beat up Charlamagne." Oh, this is he true. He just oh, dropped shit. the brass oh. knuckles on the ground. <laughs> but I'm just. I'm not. No. Whatever. I, 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 
God bless you with your family. I appreciate that. I really man. meant Thank that you. when I told you, you know, I you love you. You look like you were carrying the and baby. You, you meant that shit. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but I love you guys, man. And as much shit as we talk on, on this show, man, like, if I can't take a few jokes. This is how you process life. grief, That's man. How, this is yeah. what we're built for. <laughs> like, doing this shit my whole life. Yeah. This is, I'm from the hood. We don't take shit serious. No. That's it. You got evicted? Mm. Oh, y'all homeless? You gonna get these jokes? All right? I thought you... I'm serious. Your mom on crack <laughs> shut the fuck up <laughs> it's Andrew Schultz this guy is so crazy I thought you were shooting from deep bro. I thought you were pulling up from the half court <laughs> yo dude oh, this guy this is, guy so is crazy, wild man. bro this guy's so this crazy. Guy's wild. Oh, this guy's Oh, boy. I'm saying, if your mom was a crackhead, you would get these jokes. Like, we didn't, we, like, you go. That's how we process grief, yes. bro. That's how we all no, process grief. No, you got to laugh to keep from crying. Have to. Have to. Why we have a sense have of humor. To. There's no animal that, ha- that can laugh that doesn't feel anything. Mm. Like, lizards don't laugh. Dogs, they laugh. They feel shit. You dogs dogs feel sa- yeah. yeah. They don't feel sad. They feel happy. They show emotion. But emotion is the process of shit. That's why we have a sense of humor. It's built into us for these moments. 100%. We I gotta be grateful for dogs it. laugh. Yeah. You know that? They smile and shit too. You notice that? No. You never I seen mean, a dog smile? You're like, ha ha. Yeah, 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 <laughs> you know yeah, what I yeah, mean? Yeah. But like, they got their way of like laughing and enjoying life. I've seen them Tail like, wags cuddle. a little yeah, harder. Cuddle, yeah. 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 Shit like that. You need, dude, this is what humor is for. That's why we laugh at the darkest shit. That's why that's yes. the funniest shit. Mm. And that's why it's tears of a clown when it comes to comedians. 100%. We're the, we have the darkest shit. Of yeah. course. And a lot of, a lot of comics don't know how to process it. And a lot of them end up killing themselves. If they're good. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, if you make no whack comic kills himself, Yo, son, a whack comic kills himself. Whack, whack comics never kills themselves. Son, but the good ones, the good ones. You, bro, no, how bad you really want to be a goat? Like, how bad you want to be the goat, bro? That's yeah, who, who? Robin son. Williams? Who else? Yo, Robin Williams, Greg Giraldo. I mean, you can make the argument that Patrice, Patrice. did because Patrice, Patrice yeah. just kept, ate you know, he death. basically ate himself into a stroke. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just cast himself right up out of here, dude. Yeah. There's a <laughs> what? What is? What Richard Jenny. What's the guy? Richard Jenny. Yeah, well, Richard Jenny. Um, I'm going to be honest with y'all. I don't know none of these people y'all talking you know about. Patrice. You know Patrice. You and know Patrice. You know Robin Williams. You know Robin Williams. Uh, Greg Gerardo. Greg Gerardo really from the, the, the roast, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, you would Cosby. know Greg Gerardo if you saw him. These are goats? No, Cosby killed himself. I'm saying the people y'all talking about are the goats? I don't know. I'm oh, asking. goats. Patrice yeah, is a goat. Patrice, 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 Patrice is a goat. Patrice is a goat. I know Patrice is a goat. I mean, some might argue Robin Williams, Williams is, is a goat. Yeah. You know? He's a goat. Um, who else He's was a cancer. Up? Like me. Who else was up, th- was up there? Um, so, no, who no, else killed himself? Nobody. I can't think of anybody right now. Jenny was the one I was holding on to. But Yo, I was Richard like, Jenny was a beast. I don't even know who that is. Ask, ask Chris Rock next time you talk to him about Richard Jenny. Ask Chris. Okay. Chris, yeah, he, he's a man. Anyway, bro, um, y'all got to do an episode of uh, Flagrant. I think we we gave him a hot hour forty seven. That's nah. hot. No, no, we gave him a little less. We gave him less, but I appreciate. Oh yeah, because some of that is uh yeah. some of the earlier uh, one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but we know how it's going to mess We got shit to do, baby. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Is, is it, got a plane to catch. Charlie is trying to act like it's uh, uh, we're the reason why we got to stop this episode early. You got to go to Russia. Go home. Yeah, my my daughter's. Well, I got uh, a daughter that started sixth grade today, and another daughter that started preschool. Oh shit! Yeah, absolutely. Is that exciting for you? It's very. Uh, you really don't got to rub in the kids. That's what I was saying, this guy's son. Mm. A asshole, bro. No, mm. come no, on, dog. You're a real stop jerk. It. Come no, on, bro. Guy, how many? Mm, I got this daughter. That is like. Yo, yo, yo you got two. I'll stop it. You got two. <laughs> you greedy, Charlotte. Man, you stop greedy, it. dog. Yo, Charlotte. I wasn't even thinking. That shit. Yo, Charlotte, you a piece of <laughs> shit, bro. <laughs> just because you didn't get the mic stand. Just because. <laughs> just because. All of this just because I had to hold the mic the whole time. But no, it does give you it gives you anxiety like a motherfucker. It's like I know it else gives I call you anxiety. It parental paranoia. <laughs> parental paranoia? Yeah. Why? Because your kids are going to school. Yeah, man, that shit just gives you like a different sense of anxiety. And the first day for any child is always hard, especially when it's their first day in school. Period. Because the wife always cries. Always. Yo, are you for real right now? This first day of kindergarten? <laughs> first day of preschool. On, first day of preschool? Oh, yeah. shit. Wife always cries. She cried She cried for our oldest daughter, and she called me crying today, and which makes me freak out. Because uh-huh. if I pick up the phone and all I hear is tears, I'm like, what's wow, wrong? What's going on? Absolutely goddamn Lou. Yeah. So now I got to check my ego. Because the first thing that came out of my mouth was, you called me with this crying shit, like, and just 
Cause you sad Like, it's like, like That's a lot You know what I mean Like you're not Taking in consideration My feelings yeah. And I'm already paranoid But then you gotta Check that and be like I You know Do you ever get scared About school shootings All the fucking time yeah, Really yeah, fine, Cause your daughter Probably goes to school With white kids right Yeah you got white, All kids. white kids That's Ooh. terrifying man That's, that's a, a risk bro. Valid That's fear. a real risk Well she's in high school yeah, now Valid or? fear middle. middle school Oh yeah, no, yeah. That, that get, That's when it starts I had, I had that like, two Teenage years angst Teenage angst starts uh, there yeah, real talk i mean like okay make sure she's strapped <laughs> yo real talk but they got they got measures though like the school is locked i like i think they should have metal detectors in all the school they yeah. don't nah what is the lock gonna do yeah the school exactly. shooters already going to the school they let them in absolutely and like Chappelle said they teaching the <laughs> fucking school shooter to drill too yeah, yeah. So you know exactly where? where everybody should go yeah great. yeah, yeah. i mean there's really no drill you can do to stop a school shooter none right? yeah stop dropping roll ain't gonna work yeah <laughs> duck ain't gonna work none of that shit gonna so work just run bro. and save yourself that's Yo, all I mean, they could do to give louis ck credit his solution was probably the best what? This is the sure. one he got in a lot of trouble for. But he's like, I mean, if you grab the fattest kid and put him in front of you. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> he acting like he's not going to go tell his daughter this as soon as he gets home. Oh, yeah. nah, I was about, nah, like, about to make another you know dad joke. But it was like, nah, that was too easy. It was like, <laughs> I was like, so I should just grab Cass. Like, grab ah. Cass's leg. Just grab Cass's <laughs> Cass, put your thigh up here. Oh, oh nothing. You niggas. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, as always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. But if you listen to this podcast and you think we're just a couple idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast with Flagrant 2. Thank you for listening. And guys, uh, got a case of the post-podcast munchies. Well, White Castle sliders from the grocery store are perfect for conquering those craves. Made with 100% beef patties, a bed of steamed grilled onions, it takes just a few minutes to make your very own mouth-watering, one-of-a-kind tasting White Castle slider. So get Crave Conquering and go to whitecastle.com slash idiots to get $1 off the purchase of any four or six pack of White Castle sliders.